and I'm the chief creative head uh, here at Beats Caroline. And uh, today I'm going to be sharing some thoughts on how Facebook marketing works and uh, what are some of the things that uh, any brand should be uh, considering in terms of uh, promoting their brand. Okay, so Facebook marketing. Uh, we all know that Facebook blew up in the year two thousand eight or nine, something like that. Uh, the pre uh, uh, the the app was you know like previously being you know like uh, being given a good competition by Orkut and MySpace. But when this came into play, a lot of people were you know like pretty hesitant into coming to, into the into the app. Uh, first, I used this app for you know like playing games of the platform. But later, uh, when Facebook decided that content is going to be everything. A lot of people are onboarded on the app, and uh, today it has grown up to you know, like 1.2 billion users across the world, and it is one of the most downloaded apps on you know like uh, all the app platforms. So uh, Facebook literally changed uh, things uh, in terms of social media marketing because it uh, understood how ads should be placed and how the business model of any social media network should be you know, like connected in terms of uh, how an ad will be you know like shown to a customer. So before that, PPC were a big thing. Uh, right now, how Google does it. Because a lot of websites that had been you know, like providing banners and other sort of uh, advertisements to its uh, audience was the only thing that was available on the internet. But when Facebook came into play, Facebook understood that okay, when people see uh, a different ad that is not native to the content that they are seeing, they will understand that okay, this is not something that I want to see, and they would uh, try to evade from the ad. So Facebook understood this, and uh, it uh, developed this ad in such a way that. All the ads will look native on the platform that the customers are in. So it created ads in such a way that when you're scrolling through your Facebook feed, you not will not know that this is an ad. Even till today, if I uh, ask my mom or my dad when they are scrolling through their Facebook feed, they will not tell if they are being like, shown ads. They still think they don't have any ads on their platforms. I have literally heard it from a lot of people who uh, don't you know like notice ads and all. So they just use the platform as it is. So Facebook is one of the dominant platforms that has around around 1.6 billion followers, and uh, the ads platform on this is highly, you know, like mature. Um, why I say it's very mature is the fact that your targeting will be very extreme. So there are targeting options that can talk, uh, you know, like something like a parent of a two-year-old. So if you upload upload your uh, data saying that on December 21st, 2019, you had a child born. And you are updating as a Facebook event. Facebook will know that you are a woman who has just uh, given birth to a child on December. So on next 2020 December, it will know that the child is one year old. So this is a very you know you know like uh, deep and detailed targeting for advertisers because if a person, for example, let's say there is a company called Baby Shoes, and Baby Shoes wants to target one year old children uh, to be uh, buying this product, and uh, it is easier for them to target moms. Or parents who have this, you know, like Facebook also has. If you're, uh, if you're a spouse on their profile, you can target them also. So you can target literally them in terms of selling your baby shoes, and you know that the baby is one year old. So it'll be the perfect kind of, uh, you know, like ad for them. So it'll be very relevant for them. And retargeting once a customer engages with your ad, you can retarget them with, uh, you know, like Facebook Pixel, which you'll see in the further slides. And that is also very helpful for the face. And since Facebook acquired Instagram, it is also a you know like extended audience platform where you can just not only just reach the people on Facebook, you can uh, go up to you know like targeting them in different platforms. Facebook also uh, now tries to put ads on WhatsApp, and it also has an audience network where it is partnering with a lot of different websites, and the content that you put out can be shown to you know like different websites. For example, if your ad is about technology, the, the Facebook audience network will have an ad based technology website. So your ad will be shown to relevant audiences in uh, you know like uh, in and around the internet. So the uh, cross-platform prom promotions and you know like uh, promoting across digital devices is one of the key things that Facebook is expertise at. And once any company that wants to start you know, a Facebook page has to optimize the page because uh, customer visibility and the audience visibility is uh, the prime most important thing that uh, any brand will need. And optimizing will uh, basically uh, be very easy for a millennial to access because. Uh, we have been, you know, like creating accounts, you know, like uh, from the start of our college or something like that. So we have been creating emails. We have been creating. We had Orkut. We had Facebook. We have Instagram. We have Twitter. We have LinkedIn. We have so many accounts that we are used to the fact that we know that these are to be filled. But 
a person who is very new to the internet and does not know how to optimize his page, he has to you know, like take care of these following instructions. So the first is updated cover image and profile picture. So a lot of people will have a you know like um, cover photo that is that will not be you know like fitting into the actual crop size of the uh, profile picture section, and they'll not have a cover cover image that will you know like uh, generally align with the brand's value. So a good uh, profile picture will be the logo that is actually present inside the actual round or the square of the profile picture uh, location. And the cover image will actually let the people know that uh, what are, what are the uh, some region promotions that are going inside the platform, and uh, what kind of you know like uh, the brand that is. It can be something that can talk about the brand's uh, you know like a testimonial. So it can also be a video on Facebook. So uh, once a customer comes into the platform, the first thing that he sees is the profile picture cover. So it is very important to have it you know like uh, perfectly managed. And the company information is you know like something about uh, the company, the brand story. Uh, the about us, uh, how expensive is the company? For example, if it is a restaurant, uh, you can like say the affordability of the food inside the uh, restaurant can be you know like a low, medium to high. So that is one of the things that they have to fill in. And the easier access to contact your business is where you fill in all the things where uh, your phone numbers are perfectly planned and your email address is attached and your social networks uh, or your um, you know like the content that you post will have. You know, like if you're uh, active on Instagram and you want to tell that to your Facebook uh, followers, you can you have to put in such a way that they get to know that you are available on Instagram also. Because they they might be using Instagram more more frequent than Facebook. So it is important important for them to know that your contact and uh, your business is available in different platforms so that they can reach out to you in that way. And establishing a clear call to action is where every Facebook page will have a, a clear call to action button in uh, below the cover image. Uh, which is very prominent and it can be something like call now, you know, like shop now or download a file or you know, visit website or something like that. So it has to be very clearly made because when you run advertisements and the customer comes to your page and he wants to click on the call to action there itself. So he can, he can be uh, taking action on what you actually want him to do. So these are some of the basic things that you do when you have to optimize your page. And apart from that, uh, you have to have a good username. Uh, so that if it is facebook.com slash uh, let's say our company Reedscale and Digital, it is easier for them to you know to communicate. So if it is something like Reedscale and one two three four seven, and it is not easy to uh, you know like communicate to a person who is a new business platform. So that is something where uh, um, you know like uh, call to actions and other figures will come into play. And Facebook algorithm is very unique because uh, when initially Facebook was started, uh, Starbucks acquired a lot of fans and it spent you know like million dollars or millions of dollars into getting followers. Because uh, when Facebook started uh, pro promotions and advertising, uh, it had a concept called the more number of followers you have, the more number of reach you have. Uh, but later at point of time, uh, when companies started producing not so good content, uh, people were not actually receiving it well. So it was not the follower count that is going to define the uh, content's reach. It's going to be the content's quality that is going to define how the algorithm is going to take you forward. So uh, Facebook will define how a content is going to reach a lot of people uh, based on some ranking signals. So these ranking signals will be something like uh, how your post is going to be performing uh, even before it has you know like uh, reached like a uh, first way of publishing. So it will try to understand what your content is and how far the content is being engaged with. So the ranking signals are basically it will collect these information from the users. So the users will uh, give uh, Facebook information about how this content is going to perform and how the person is going to potentially interact with the content. So for example, if I'm a cricket player and I'm constantly engaging with a lot of cricket based ideas and thoughts and posts regarding that, uh, for me, the algorithm will work in such a way that a post that is about cricket and about a player that I really like will be favored to me because I might engage the post and I might comment on the post and I, share, I can share the post. So it will make sure that I like the post most and I will have enough, you know, like uh, satisfaction while I'm browsing through my newsfeed. So it, it will keep me engaged throughout my entire scroll. So the infinite scroll will be all uh, relevant to me. And the type of content they interact with. So some some people might be, you know, like very interested to read uh, text. Some people be uh, very interested to you know, like just uh, video section. So if, if on Facebook app. If you click on the video, it will take you to a separate page, which will be a theater mode. So where you just scroll and it is just videos. So it will be like for you page where Facebook will recommend, keep recommending all the videos that you might potentially like. So the type of content I interact with will also define how my newsfeed is going to be. So if I'm a person who is already, you know, like consuming a lot of uh, videos 
and it is going to give me a fact that uh, I'm going to get a lot of videos on my feed naturally. So the algorithm will define what kind of content I'll see. So these ranking ranking signals will play a crucial part in that. And the popularity of the post, for example, if a if a post is being made at 6 p.m. in the evening, and by the end of 6:30, this post has like 15 likes and 17 comments. Facebook will know that the algorithm will know that this post is worth talking about because 17 people have commented. Because commenting is one of the most difficult parts of engagement because people actually thought that okay, I need to tell something about this post. So it will define the popularity of the post, and once it understands a certain a ranking factor that puts it on the page with the uh, billions of data that it already has, it will know that okay, this post is going to go up based on the number of likes and comments it has gotten in a certain period of time. Uh, which we don't, we do not exactly know what the criteria is, but once the criteria is met, the algorithm will say, okay, this post is going well. So it will take uh, the page to all the relevant people who might potentially engage with the post. And right now, uh, in 2019 and 2018, end of 2018, the organic reach has very, uh, you know, like uh, come down a lot because uh, the number of content being produced and the number of con uh, people who are consuming the content is, you know, like very uh, disproportionate because the number of contents being produced is less and the number of people who are consuming the content is more. So it is not possible at all for all the brands that are creating content and the content should be, you know, like reached to all these people who are in the market. So the organic reach has technically uh, fallen and that is why uh, TikTok and LinkedIn other platforms have very good organic reach. So Facebook was at a saturation point where there were very less content creators and very less people to consume content. Right now, it is not being uh, very much in uh, like alignment. So running a Facebook ad, ad campaign is uh, very easy. Facebook uh, has a lot of courses and uh, you know, like lessons on how to run ads. And it even has a promote button on the page, which you should not be doing. And um, the Facebook ad campaign will define how you your ads will be you know, like, uh, visible to your customers. So I'll just run this through because it is a lot more detailed than how I'm going to be talking because it, every single thing in, in this slide will have a you know like whole set of uh, you know like lesson to be taught and a lesson to be understood. So there are three things basically. So awareness, consideration, and uh, conversion. So this is basically the marketing sales funnel. So this is how every marketing works. So the awareness, the brand awareness and reach will uh, define your, uh, you know, like it will give awareness to your brand. For example, if you're just starting out and if you're just opening a new shop in, you know, like, uh, let's say in Chennai and uh, you want to just create brand awareness. So you want to just let people know that you are existing and uh, you just want to let them know how your uh, office looks or how your restaurant looks or how your shop is looking. So that is the part where awareness comes into play and this will not have any sort of call to action because you're just letting people know that you are in the market. And when in the consideration phase, you you are targeting them over and over again saying, okay, now that you know what my company is doing, I just want you to call me and they will like book an appointment at my restaurant or I just want you to walk into my restaurant or I, I just want you to walk into my shop and buy something. And uh, this, this will be a consideration part where traffic will be on the phase where you can drive them to your website or you can drive them to your, uh, you know, like uh, offline office uh, through webinar. Uh, and uh, there, are, there are also this thing called app installs where uh, you can promote apps and they can be taken to app store directly for downloads. There are video views where uh, you can uh, make the people see your video for more than three seconds, which is very important. And lead generation where you can ask them for leads and messages where they can potentially care a lot more about your brand. So this is the consideration phase because they are not actually buying something, but they are ready to give you some information or they're ready to take uh, um, them to a place where they, they might consider buying from your brand. And conversion is basically like you can target them in terms of sales. So you take them to the add to cart and you take them to the payment gateway. Right away. Right away. So these are the campaign objectives that uh, basically start with Facebook ad campaigns. And the targeting is very unique because you target literally uh, any the word. Uh, the only change will be, uh, you know, like the amount of money that you're going to be spending in different countries because uh, the number of advertisers and number of uh, people who are going to be receiving the content will define how much uh, your um, ad per reach will be and the content will also define how your ad is going to perform. So there is this thing called... Uh, so there is this thing called audience name, which you'll be setting for your own ad. And uh, there are custom audiences where you can create your own custom audiences based off of uh, and previous ad that you have created. And you can target people based on their locations. And in this look, you know, like target them based on, you know, like uh, people who are living here and people who are living here, but excluding people who are from this area. So there are a lot of things to work with. I'm just giving you a 
outline of how this thing works and you can target them with the page uh, the gender the language and there is another thing which i, I haven't added to this so and it is something where, which is called behavior so the behavior will uh, define uh, how much of you provide the facebook that is said to use against in the keyword advertising so let's say uh, you you are a person let's say I, I was talking about a person who has just had a baby so we'll talk about something you are uh, posting on your timeline say you are traveling to chennai so i want i'm a company or i'm a brand i'm a restaurant in chennai uh, railway station so i might have an ad that that specifically targets people who are traveling to chennai the next day so i'll uh, run my ads to them saying okay if you are in chennai you should definitely try this out so he might be a tourist who wants to explore new things so if he sees your ad there is a high possibility that he, he might want to come come to your place and have a you know like a plate of coffee you know like a cup cup of cup of coffee or you know like a plate of fish that you uh, consider your specialty so this is how targeting works on facebook and once your targeting is done and you are uh, successfully run a specific campaign on, on facebook there is a thing called facebook pixel so facebook pixel can be integrated into your website to understand how your websites are active so once you go to your website you have to track their website activity so how long they stay on the page how long they uh, take to you know like uh, spend time on your uh, landing page how much you know like they read so this uh, session activities will define how uh, your con conversion rate is going to be so this will be very helpful in understanding how your roe is going to be in terms of actual ad spend that you are going to do and the actual revenue you are going to get so this will also give you an insight about uh, how you have been reaching your audience in the past and how you can use this data to work and get new customers so you can actually use this data and as i said custom audiences you can create look alike audiences and you can create data which is what which is what i'm going to talk about right now so conversion tracking so conversion tracking is basically uh, for example every single page of you uh, can have a facebook pixel so for the first time when you are trying to bring a customer to a page uh, it can be to your home page where he is just going to learn about your product and the next time you are targeting you can actually tell them okay i have a product that is very useful to you and i think you will get benefit from it and you will take him to the product page so the next page you also have a different pixel which will note people who have only come to the product page so now you have a set of audience who have come to your home page and you now you have a set of audience who have come to the product page the people who have come to your product page are more uh, have more intent in buying your product than the people who have just come to the home page so the third thing is when you can literally say that okay now, now that i i know that you are going to promote a specific product you offer of 30% and and this offer is only valid uh, if you are going to buy it right now so we are actually motivating them to buy the product right away uh, better value. so once this person converts from us you can actually know that the first time he, he uh, interacted with the awareness ad and to the point where uh, he finally understood uh, okay I, i need this product and bought for you, bought the product from your brand so if you have spent 200 rupees on this entire lifetime uh, of his ad uh, journey you have acquired this customer for 200 rupees and if your profit margin is more than 200 rupees you are profitable so you should try to understand uh, the facts that are involved in analyzing this data to understand that okay uh, if i'm going to have a margin of 200 rupees i have to acquire a customer in less than 200 rupees so that my margin can be 130 so you have to work out your math in such a way that it is very difficult so that is conversion tracking and facebook retargeting uh, will work in uh, such a way where you understand okay these people have come to my home page and i have to retarget them with a different ad piece so the different ad piece will uh, engage them in a different way because the first time we are talking about your opening and uh, you know like arrival onto the market the second time you will say what you are good at uh, what they can bring you benefit from and the third thing is why it is necessary for them to buy from you so the facebook retargeting will give you a entire sales funnel of how your customer's journey is going to be and how he's going to benefit from you so that you can benefit in the long run very underrated platforms uh, underrated features on facebook because uh, let's say i i bought a black t-shirt from a company and uh, the company wants to find a person who is exactly like me so i'll have certain interest uh, that is uh, deeply embedded into me i might like uh, you know like metallica band i might i might like a rock band i might like you know like cycling i might go on trekking so these are some of the factors that define me so <laughs> this these factors and this person are aligned together so let's find all these people who have the similar interest and these personalities so that i'll try this person with the same ads and try to see if the if these people try to buy so once this person is exactly a look alike 
our conversion rate will be better because it is not trying with any random people showing the ads and trying to see if the ad is working. So uh, this lookalike audiences is one of the most uh, you know like crucial parts that we are targeting and uh, you know, re-evaluation of our advertisements is considered to be like and uh, coming to what's more, uh, uh, apart from what uh, you know, like Facebook ads is offering, Instagram ads is also a, mm -hmm. like a, uh, a platform where uh, you can target all the millennials. And the type of ad form is different. The stories is one of the highlighting factors because every single morning, anyone who goes to Instagram can stop from you know, like clicking on the stories and checking out what other people are into. So if you if you scroll through four stories, the fifth story will be an ad. Or the sixth story will be an ad, and it is as easy to communicate with the ad because once you swipe up, it the ad directly takes you to a website or landing page that can be better. So I think uh, talking about Facebook marketing is very, you know, like it's, it's a detailed process, and I have not gone into any much depth because it's very long. So I'll I end this here. Thank you so much for you know like <laughs> trying to understand uh, the things that I was trying to communicate in this short span of time. So I'll end this presentation. If you have any questions, you can put it forward to me and I'll try to help you out. Yeah, hi Rajagun. Uh, hi Ram. Uh, so I have had this doubt all throughout. So basically, what is said is through Facebook, through Instagram, or any social media platform, the operators, the main operators, that is the platform moderators, have any rights to do anything. For example, they they remove content that are, that are not political. So how can we be so? What do you say? Sure that all these ads are going to the right people uh, or just for getting the metrics right it can show to random people and all this how can we be assured as a person who is spending money okay. on facebook how can i be assured that it is going to the right people okay so uh, technically we can't see all of the ads that are being based to for example if your ad is reaching one lakh people in general it's not possible for us to see what profiles these only people wear because uh, that is where this concept of sharing your profile uh, actually comes in. Uh, but once you try to understand how your ad is performing in terms of, let's say if you have an e-commerce store and uh, you promote it to a uh, thousand people and uh, you can actually see the metrics that is not actually considered, uh, you know, like uh, inside Facebook, but you can just try to understand it from Google Analytics. You will see that these thousand people have come in, and these many people have uh, added this to their cart. So you can actually see the number of people who have seen your ad and the number of people who have engaged with your ad. So, which is very, uh, you know, like something that is noteworthy because uh, if this data was fake or we are not ready to trust these numbers, this data will also be fake. So, uh, it is kind of a trust that we have to put because it is not possible for us to uh, check every single profile that has actually had the ad. Uh, but uh, I think uh, the government is regulating, uh, regulating these processes in terms of Facebook advertising and you know, like, uh, Instagram advertising. But we can't be sure. But the only thing that we can do is we can focus only on conversion and see how this works. For for minimal budgets like two thousand or three thousand or four thousand, it is not possible for us to you know like have this uh, uh, sorted out. But once you run a big budget, you will actually see the number of conversions in terms of uh, you know, like actual conversions that we that is called ROAS, uh, return on ad spend. Because a lot of people have uh, put up their case studies saying I, I spent this much and I got this money. So that that is what we can actually trust. In. Uh, we can't actually see how many ads have been seen by people. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Ram. Uh, so I have a doubt uh, regarding the uh, targeting of the people. Like okay. when you when we design a post, uh, do we target them? Uh, uh, do we target the people first and design the post, or uh, how this designing happens? No. So the the process that I showed you, which was the campaign objectives. So once you click on uh, brand awareness, uh, you'll be taken to a different. Just there, you you know like uh, engage with the uh, uh, images and the content that you are actually going to promote. 
so you will upload the image that you want to promote you will add the ad copy you will add the call to action so everything will be set up and then uh, finally when this all is placed you will add be placed for review so on, once this ad goes to review uh, facebook will check this for you know like uh, uh, political content sensitive content uh, sexual or vulgar content and hate speech and it will go through all the processes and then it will approve your ad so the content part is at the last part of the ads manager which uh, if we if we have a session on ads manager we will actually have a clear idea of how this works but the content will be the third part of the i showed you the campaign objectives and i showed you showed you the targeting the third part is the uh, creative part so the creative part is where you upload your content okay then we uh, i mean after the completion of this process we target the people right so the first is the campaign objectives the second is the targeting the third is the creative okay yeah yeah and you submit the ad for approval and the facebook algorithm and the manual uh, processing goes and then they approve it okay thank you cool thank you yes sir i have a doubt yeah hi hi lumini siva how are you yes i'm very fine i i think you're new here i'm new here and then uh, even i got a uh, message uh, ram krishnan saying only by 6 o'clock i could see only 620 this okay. last 10 minutes and i have 10 but i have okay. a doubt very small direct doubt in tamil la solli irana nanandu enakku oru page irukku and the page la nanda na advertisement promote panniter iruken so okay. that is uh, only for salem region salem mattum select panniter salem la nanda na operate pandren okay adula nanda enakku enga doubt varudha na salem ku select pannum bodhu 400 rupees select panna mudiyudhu 400 adhil automatically plus 720 sorry 72 tax pay vandirudhu gst payment gst paper add panni vandirudhu per day adding 80 80 rupees or 200 rupees nu oru saala slab irukku add pannikalam but enakku oru vaarathukku enakku oru 10000 rupees sell pananum immediately enakku add promo pananana settings maadradhuk option engalukku iruka naangale individual la panna mudiyuma adu eppadi pandradhu indha doubt la avaroda ketta indha same attempt pannunga taru okay okay sure sir ipo neenga vandha i think you are using the facebook page le promote nu or option irukku adha neenga use pandringa na nenikiren facebook page la boost or or post na boost yeah um actually adu panna kodada actually that is facebook's way of eppadi solradhu ellare vandu promote panna vekkiradhukku vandu or idu so anga vandu neenga card add panniteenga it is an interacting loop unga numbers kaamche ya maatruanga so detail la pannum bodhu vandu facebook ads manager nu or platform irukku so adu neenga thaniya or and ungala account la irundhu neenga access pannalam so unga ads manager create panniteenga adula dhaan ipo na ungalku indha presentation la kaamichiren so eppadi objective set pannanum na kadhiya dhaan na paakala paaka mudiyala vera ipo na vandu or page சொல்லுங்க சொல்லுங்க நான் ஒரு பேஜ் ப்ரோமோட் பண்ணனும் இமிடியட் இன்னைக்கு இருந்து ரன் பண்ணனும் நான் அதுக்கு ஏதா வழி சொல்லிக்க போங்க இந்த செஷன் முடிக்க போறது ஏன்னா அவர் கூட கேக்க சொல்லி இருக்காரு ஐ திங்க் ஐ ஆஃப்டர் தி செஷன் ஐ கேன் கிவ் யூ समथिंग வெரி இன்சைட்ஃபுல் சார் बिकॉज ஏனா இப்போ நான் அத பத்தி பேச ஆரம்பிச்சிருக்கேன் இல்ல இப்போ அத நீங்க பண்ணீங்க ஏனா ஐ ஆல் பண்ணீங்க ஐ வில் கெட் இட் फ्रॉम ராம் சார் ஐ வில் கெட் இட் फ्रॉम ராம் நவ ஓகே என்ன கூப்பிடுங்களா முடிச்சிட்டு ஷூர் 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 சார் ஏனா அது வந்து இட் இஸ் பிரெடி காம்ப்ளெக்ஸ் बिकॉज நான் உங்களுக்கு பேசிக்கா சொல்லி காமிக்க ஸ்கிரீன் கோ போய் காமிங் பை கான்ட் ஷேர் மீ ஸ்கிரீன் ஒரு தடவை எனக்கு ஒரு தடவை பண்ணி கொடுங்க ப்ளீஸ் அது ராம் கிட்ட நம்பர் வாங்கி தரேன் இல்ல உங்க நம்பர் சொல்லுங்க நான் நோட் பண்ணிக்கிறேன் உங்களுக்கு கூப்பிறேன் நான் உங்களுக்கு ப்ளீஸ் என்ன இமிடியேட்டவே பண்ணுங்க 8129 8129 ஓகே 36337 yes. 36337 yes sir yes sir 36337 yes yes கரெக்ட் थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू ஓகே ஓகே சார் ஆ so do any of you have any questions okay i i think that is enough for today i i hope you had a good session uh, i don't think it was rushed up because a lot of things to be covered in a short amount of time uh, thank you so much for staying in uh, we'll see you in another meeting until then uh, this is guvan and team reskelen bye bye